And the next talk is by Amir Hertz, Ron Mokadi, Jay Tenenbaum, Kfir Aberman, Yael Preach, and Danny Koenor. It's on prompt to prompt, and Ron is going to give the talk. Okay, so hi everyone, I'm Ron, and today we'll talk about image editing with diffusion models, specifically focusing on a prompt-to-prompt -prompt approach. So 2022 was definitely the year of text-guided diffusion models, and I don't think I need to say much about the quality of their results. You all probably remember the first time you generated a high-quality image using only text. This one was my first. For the few who are not familiar with these models, basically, random noise is mapped to highly diverse images guided by only text through a sequence of denoising steps. However, although these models are amazing generation tools, they're not designed for image editing. Let's say you want to generate a cat on a bicycle. You try several times, and are generally pleased with this particular result. But what if you actually prefer a green bicycle? The most intuitive and natural way is just adding the word green to the prompt and regenerating the entire image. However, even with the same random seed, you get a completely different cat. And if we want to replace the cat with a koala, now, the color of the bicycle is changed. And same things happen for replacing the grass with sweet or asking for a bicycle made out of candies. This was our motivation from prompt to prompt, which enabled us to preserve the structure and the composition of the original image so we can intuitively edit generated images using only text. As you can see, we can now easily edit our favorite cat. So how does it work? Our key observation is that the cross-attention maps deep inside our model control the relations between pixels and words. And therefore, we can preserve the structure of the original image by injecting these attention maps, which are visualized here behind me. For example, starting with this lemon cake. Again, using the same seed results in completely different cakes. By injecting the internal course attention maps, which produce the original image, we can finally get a square chocolate cake, or even a square pasta cake. So, to replace the ca this cat with a different animal, we just replace the word cat in the prompt while injecting the attention. And these are the results. By limiting the injection to only part of the diffusion steps, we can intuitively control the fidelity to the original image and to the target text. Here we aim to replace the bicycle with a car. Note how too many injection step results still in a bicycle, while too few result in completely different composition. We can also inject self-attention, which maintains the image structure more firmly, but does not correlate to the text tokens. Since we still want to allow some degrees of freedom, we use self-attention for only about 20% of the steps. If we, ask, if we wish to add a new phrase to the prompt, we only inject the maps of the original prompt tokens. For example, here, we specify different hats for our cat. As you can see here, many editing operations are naturally global, affecting the entire image. But we can also perform local editing using the attention map itself 
to limit the editing to a specific region. Sorry? Remarkably, we can even control the magnitude of the effect induced by a specific word by scaling its attention map. For instance, here we make the hat gradually more floral. I also like to think about it as intuitive fader control. Here we increase and decrease the fluffiness of the doll. So this is very cool, but all these examples were generated. How can we edit real images, which do not just show up with attention maps? This requires a process called inversion. Given input image, we need to find a noise vector which can reproduce the input image when fed to the generator. For this purpose, we design a new inversion scheme for diffusion models called null text inversion. It consists of two components. The first is pivotal inversion for diffusion. We observe that other approaches aim to map all noise vector to a single image during optimization. This is highly inefficient, as only one noise vector is used at inference. Instead, we use a single noise vector during optimization. But how can we get this noise? We first consider the direct DDIM inversion. So without classifier free guidance, DDIM inversion reconstructs the image well. But it is not editable, as classifier free guidance is essential for our editing. Using classifier free guidance for both inversion and inference completely fails. Using classifier free guidance on it inference is not accurate, but does provide a pretty good starting point for our optimization. So, we use the DDM inversion to produce a latent trajectory from the original image, Z0, to a noise vector, Zt. Feeding this noise vector to the diffusion process results in distortion when the classifier free guidance is applied, as the latent codes become farther away from the original trajectory. Inspired by the pivotal tuning approach, we consider the DDM inversion trajectory as a pivot and perform a second step optimization around this anchor. More specifically, we aim to bring the diffusion backward trajectory closer to the original image. Ideally, if the trajectory will be identical in both directions, we will get a perfect reconstruction. So, we start with ZT, and for each time step, try to get as close as possible to the pivot trajectory. So now it is left to show you the optimization itself. Fine-tuning the entire model is highly expressive, but inefficient. So, we design a more efficient approach called null text inversion. But first, I need to explain classifier free guidance. This is an essential component designed to amplify the effect of the text guidance. It consists of performing the prediction twice in each step once with the text condition, and once unconditionally with null text embedding. Then, these predictions are extrapolated. While all works concentrate on tuning the model or the conditional text, we recognize the substantial effect induced by the unconditional part. And therefore, we only optimize the embedding used in the unconditional prediction, replacing the null text embedding. And we use the objective of getting closer to the pivot. So this result in high fidelity 
to both the original image and the target text without any tuning to the model or the text embedding. And of course, such editing operations are highly applicable for artistic and photography purposes. Lastly, although we published it just recently, there are already works that manipulate attention maps based on prompt to prompt. My favorite is Instruct Pix to Pix, which uses prompt to prompt to create a synthetic data set for image editing. For example, you can see a generated image of a woman riding a horse and the edited image where the horse is replaced with a dragon. These images on the right were produced by prompt to prompt. By also producing a textual instruction, as you can see here, we get triplets. And this allows a supervised training of an editing model, which is now capable of successfully editing a real image using simple textual instruction. For example, here, we can replace the fruits with a cake. So that's it. Thank you for listening. And please visit our project page for more information. Thank you, Ron. Time for a couple of questions. Uh, first, very nice works. Uh, I have a question about the null text inversion. So you, you observe that if you do the DDM inversion with uh, the null text, like with, without classifier guidance, it works well. Uh, with classifier guidance, it does not work well. I wonder if you have any analysis or in insight as to why, because the formulation of the DDM inversion can be exactly the same with classifier guidance. Yeah, it's a bit complicated, but actually if, if you dig into it, so in DDM inversion, there is some assumptions which are not true in real life, like that we use a lot of steps. Like if you would use like infinite number of steps, so the DDM inversion assumption will work. But without classifier free guidance, it still work as if you compute the difference between temporally adjacent latent codes, uh, you get a pretty smooth function. Like, so the, the, the linear assumption of the DDM inversion still works. And if you do many steps, let's say like the entire uh, uh, 1K uh, steps of the diffusion in the inversion, will it work better in classified elements? Yeah. Thanks. Okay, any other questions? Okay. Let's thank the speaker again.